All right, I've had a couple questions on uh, if this coax was really two ohms or whether it was just uh, shorted out just because it was shorted out and it measured two ohms at DC, but at 700 megahertz or gigahertz, it's operating perfectly fine at uh, 50, her uh, 50 ohms. It probably is a 50 ohm impedance, that would be my guess. Um, and uh, because I knew it wouldn't operate at 3 megahertz, 3 megahertz is basically DC, it's, it wasn't going to operate there, but um, there was still a lot of questions about whether this, uh, you know, where this actually did operate. If, you know, the, the device was um, uh, marked some 700 megahertz to 2.7 gigahertz, and um, it, it may, it may darn well operate there. So, um, I should have probably tried to measure it um, on day one before I ripped it out, but um, I didn't. Um, but then I began to think, well, I can still measure it. Uh, I still have the coax here. The reason that I didn't probably measure it originally easily is it had that weird connector on it, that weird 30 millimeter connector. I've thrown it away since. Um, but I do have this nice big long chunk of coax, a metal braid coax. So I think what I'll do is I'll try to uh, attach an SMA connector uh, onto the end here. And um, we'll see if we can't uh, put it on the... Um, on a machine and try to measure if it actually is acting as a 50 ohm load or not. Um, if my machine isn't really the right one to do this job, um, but it'll get us close. Um, and if I get interesting results, then I have a friend who has a vector network analyzer. And so I will look him up and uh, I had lunch with him today and kind of discuss this thing with him. Um, so, um, yeah, let me put a... Um, let me put a connector on here and uh, and see what's going on. Maybe a connector on both ends, um, so we can do a through 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 measurement as well to see how much a, attenuation there is from end to end. All right, uh, this is what I've done. This is a little uh, SMA connector. Um, it's meant to uh, um, go on a PC board, but. Uh, I've taken the uh, coax here and split it on two sides and splayed it open and soldered the center conductor on and then uh, the two splits I've put on. Um, this should be good to a gigahertz at least, uh, if not a little bit more than that. Uh, I don't think this particular crude <laughs> way of connecting things will be too bad. Um, and it'll give us an idea of what's going on. So, um, yeah, I think the next thing to do would be, um, hmm, I don't know if I should put one on the other end as well. I think I will. I think I'll put another one on, on the other side. The center conductor of this coax looks like it's almost solid, uh, solid silver. I mean, it looks really, really high class. So, um, and this braid, this braid looks like it's like dipped in solder. It's totally solid. So, and it almost looks like a silver solder. So, I think this coax is like uber expensive stuff. Um, so, it might be nice to have around the shop. All right. So here's the pin, and here's the. Here's a little wire, so I'm going to have to come in here and let me straighten this out a bit. What a stiff wire. So I think I'll see if I can't put a blob of solder on there. So I can do this on camera. Last time I did it through the binocular, which is a whole lot easier because things are a little more difficult this way. I'm going to put a little blob of solder on the uh, coax, so it's ready to go too, and yeah, something like that, and then we'll bend these uh, sides over so they touch and uh, solder down and make it look pretty. Alright, I think that looks pretty good.
All right, there we go. We have uh, our two SMA connectors and uh, a lot of turns. So we can kind of guess. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, maybe twelve by one, two, three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine by twelve. So if it's ten by twelve, that'd be a hundred and twenty turns. Um, and if we figure it's about, uh, let's say it's one foot around and there's a hundred turns, that's a uh, hundred feet. So yeah, about a hundred feet of, uh, about a hundred feet of uh, coax. So uh, yeah, interesting. All right, uh, so we have uh, uh, input and output SMA connectors and I'm going to short them together with a uh, female female adapter and so we will uh, have input connected directly to output and you can see that we have a, we have a line up here um, and so this is from uh, a megahertz to a gigahertz uh, span. So I'm going to uh, zero this. Uh, it's 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 pretty flat. There's a little bit of bumpiness in the connector connector and cables, but I'm going to zero this. So now we have a straight line on top, and. We will now take out the uh, little shorting female female and in its place we will put the um, 100 feet of coax. So we should see some attenuation uh, from end to end. Now be aware that we're operating here at 50 hertz. My uh, Network analyzer is 50 hertz, so. I'm sorry, my uh, batteries went dead there, so uh, I'm not quite sure where where the camera cut out, but um, we're basically looking at the uh, uh, 100 feet of uh, coax here and uh, in, input output, and we're seeing that uh, uh, from 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 zero to one gigahertz, uh, the loss uh, gets larger and larger and larger as we go up in frequency. Um, that's standard of any coax. Um, so there's not much loss here at low frequencies, but there is a lot of loss here at high frequencies. Now, this particular attenuator was specified at 700 to one uh, 700 megahertz to 2.7 gigahertz. My machine only goes to a gigahertz, so we can't really look above that. But we can see here from 700 is about here from 700 to a gigahertz 700 megahertz to a gigahertz it is quite lossy it's about uh, 10 12 12 dB loss um, and um, so is that enough to be an attenuator or a, a dummy load um, hmm well it would have to go it would reflect forwards and backwards, so I don't know. I think the thing to do is to take a look at this on a vector network analyzer. Uh, it was shorted on one end, so the wave is going to go through the 100 feet of coax. It's going to reflect at that short and come back and get absorbed a second return path. So it's more like 200 feet of coax to do all of the attenuation. Um, so then that would be more like uh, if this is say 18 dB, it would be twice that, 36 dB. Um, yeah, so maybe. Um, it's kind of a weird way to do a dummy load. Um, I don't know why they didn't terminate this with a resistor. I mean, use the coax for most of it and then have a power resistor at the end to do the rest of it, but I don't really know. And we don't really know whether we're operating at 50, at, uh, 50 ohms or not. Uh, this is operating at 50 ohms, but we don't really know the network of uh, the impedance of this coax. Um, there are some um, YouTube's online of people uh, where you can actually measure the um, measure the uh, 
impedance of the coax. So I might try that. I've never done that. Never done that before. Um, but certainly here, if we set this thing to um, let's see, if we want to go from 700 to a gigahertz, uh, 700. Let's go. Um, uh, so 700, uh, 800, 900 to get. That's three. And so eight and a half. Let's center this at 850. And then let's sweep 300 megahertz. So there we go. So this is uh, how it operates from 700 megahertz to a gigahertz. So yeah, so it is pretty flat. Um, and it's measuring about, oh, uh, no more than, I mean, uh, no less than uh, 15, 15 dB gain uh, loss, 15 to 18 dB loss, something like that.